there, there are I things that, that turn me into an irascible old man and, sh- and I guess show my age, but they just annoy they me out of all proportion. Computer running, though. So, no, I ignore them as well until, until no, but, you know. But what they do, they clog up the right hand side of the screen, screen and they distract you. Well, and that I, tell you what, I, tell you, I tell you what, no, no, I've got, I get loads. I tell you what else I hate. I really, really hate people calling me on my mobile phone and thinking that that's how I want to be called. Oh, okay. I like being called on a landline. And if people are going to call me on oh, my mobile really phone, I'd rather have a text text first text. or a. Yeah. Yes. I yeah, just no, think it's I know. Impertinent. All oh, right. Well, young I, people I, don't I mean, even. A landline call is is big to me. That's big. I still have a landline mainly to call my parents, but I mean, lots of people don't even have them now. You wow. are definitely showing your age. Anyway, Laura, can I can I just say why why do you think I'm so I'm so excited today? I don't know why. Because you were late for the podcast. Oh, well, you're not recording this I, now. You know that. I don't see record. Oh, it says recording on mine. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Fair it says enough. On mine. Okay. D- okay. You will. You, oh, that's you will late. For, you, I think it was. And do you remember what you told me about your your dates that you went on? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. What Very... happened if somebody if your date turned up late? Well, I just would never have seen seen them again. <laughs> exactly. So basically, I've won. That's number one. And number two, the other thing that makes me happy, lots of people have started saying things like. Um, you need to get a new camera. You need to get a new um, microphone. And they're not, they're not talking about me this time. They're talking about you. No, I know. Just basically... I know. Yeah. I mean, do you realize that, that what you look like? You look like a kind of blurry, a blurry brown thing. <laughs> I'm happy with that. That's fine by me. People will right. just have to cope, you know. Until, until but... some benefactor builds us our studio, James. They can all just oh, suck I know. Have you, have you seen the traffic we're getting? Have you seen yeah, how? Yeah. I the, mean, last, the last one did well. Did yeah, yeah. Oh, I think we're up to about fifteen thousand yeah. regulars now, and, and possibly more as the the snowball goes down the mountain and turns into an avalanche and kills everybody. Yeah. Yes. No, maybe we don't, we don't want to be that, do we? No. no. It's an acquired um, taste, I think. No, I don't think so. I think it's like no, in, in it's no it's no worse than it's no worse than coffee. Okay. I don't think. Yes. No, the reason I mentioned that I, the reason I mentioned that is that, that when I was um, when I was a boy, my dad used to say to me, "You've got you've got to try you've got to get used to drinking coffee," yeah. and I said, but "It's horrible." It's, ugh, ugh. And he yes. said, "It's an acquired taste." And I said, "Well, why do I want to acquire it?" And he said, yes. "Because it's a very important social drink, and you'll find it very useful in your life." No, and, that's true. Well, sure, that is true. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't start, I can, this is where I can drop in that I didn't start drinking coffee until I went to Cambridge Line postgraduate. So I was really, I was old. I'd, I'd forgotten you were at Cambridge. What, what, what college well, were you at? For the postgraduate, not, not my, my undergraduate I did in Ireland. What's it called? At the Ireland, the, your college. Oh, Darwin, Darwin. So it was full of scientists. So I feel right. I'm pretty well placed to speak upon how the scientists view the world because they were there were very few you know lawyers or or english english grads there it was it was obviously because of the name because it's darwin college yeah they were all scientists they were all great yes. but yeah we should we should talk about that because mm. uh, nothing is nothing is accidental um the world that we live in now is a function of all manner of different strands from the past mm. coming together. And I think, and I, I, I did actually touch on this in Watermelons, but it's, but it's really, I, I think, even more germane in, these, in this kind of age of scientism, you know, kind of yes. fake science, junk science, politi- pol- politicised science. But did you, it almost began with that C.P. Snow lecture you know the famous one about the about how um arts graduates didn't understand basic science and it it, it kind of created this this division uh, it set out this division between scientists and kind yes. of liberal arts graduates yeah and cp Snow's, Snow's implication was kind of that the the liberal arts graduates were inferior and since then 
I mean, over the decades, we've we've got the fetishization increasingly in the last couple of decades of STEM subjects. You know, you you get you get even arts graduates like you know Gove who read English, yeah, so, talking about how important it is to get STEM subjects, as though if you haven't got a STEM subject, you're you're somehow lacking, and this is the way forward. And and you you saw this as well in the thinking of um, almost forgotten his name. He's you know he's disappeared now. Dominic Cummings. Dominic oh, yes. Cummings wants to turn turn Britain into a kind of sciency technocracy yes. with a sort of DARPA like. Uh, relationship, yeah, you know, sort of state-funded institution, which makes us so sciencey. We're going to be the sciencey. He's going to science the, the shit mentioned. out of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did, you, see, did, did, you, did you see that movie? Yeah, uh, I, I saw a part of it. Yeah, I, 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 it was okay. What was it called? So that again? was the Holly. Uh, oh, oh, with I don't Matt know. Damon. Yeah, he's on Matt it. Yeah, Damon. I know. So, yeah. so, but, 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 even that. I, I, this isn't a digression because I think it. I think it's relevant. Oh, no. Even in that film, that phrase, I'm going to science the shit out of it. Yeah. This, this idea that science mm. is, science is our new God. Science has replaced God and, mm. and science has all the answers and it doesn't. And yes. these people have been raised on, you know, for example, Radio 4, that awful program by Jim Al-Khalili, where he takes, I mean, not the list, I haven't listened to it for about five years. Yeah. But again, he puts scientists on a pedestal just because they're scientists and, yes. and reveres them and everything they say because it's science. Well, yeah. this has got us into an awful mess. Sorry, I've talked too long. No, you can have a round. No, it's fine. Look, I, I think um, in terms of the scientism, and, and it's true, this is the great, uh, the great takeover, but what, it, what it's allowed the politicians to do, and I think we had this with globalization, is that, okay, it could be scientists, but it's not, it's not just that. It's more the dominance of experts. You know, so what they do is they try and grab more and more policy areas and they say, and it's not just to arts graduates, it can be, of course, to anybody, people without a degree. I mean, they're even lower, right, on the totem pole than, than your, your average lawyer or, or um, uh, arts graduate. So what, what, the, what the, the, the policymakers are able to say is, no, I'm sorry, this is too complicated for the ordinary man. Um, this is a question of expertise. You know, and I think I think as I'm reading a book on it now, I think we had this at globalization. Like, don't, don't no, 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 no. You, you don't have an opinion on free trade or globalization or how much we should outsource the jobs, because this is just this is just a matter of logic. Of course, we should outsource all of our jobs to China. Why wouldn't you do that? What would stop you from doing that? All the goods that you buy will then be cheaper. And then someone says, yeah, that's true. But my neighbor's going to lose his job. No, but but so what? I, I don't, but your, your, all the stuff you will buy and in fact that your neighbor will be able to buy will be much, much cheaper if we outsource the job to China. This is a matter of as logic. I mean, this is just expertise. And you're like, yeah, but I, I don't want my neighbor to lose my job, his job. And I don't want, I don't, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to lose his job. And you're getting the same thing with this, with this COVID thing. And as I said, I don't even, I'm pretty agnostic. I know that you aren't. I know that others aren't there. I'm agnostic enough on the science as in how serious is it? How, how is it not serious? Blah, blah, blah. But I reject the concept that the scientists are the new experts and they get to make what is a policy decision. These are political decisions, you know, or moral decisions. How much do you close? How much do you keep open? You know, these are all. And but what they're doing, and this is exactly the phrase, follow the science. This is what it does is say, shut up, because you're simply not qualified enough to give to give an opinion on whether or not we should close your restaurant because we're closing, we're, we're following the science and, you know, so they're in a way they're abusing science. It's, 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 they're abusing science and, and scientists. And of course the scientists themselves, I mean, in, in, because they're all nerds and um, they're loving the limelight. So, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible for them, but some of them do in fairness and some of them do say these ultimately are policy decisions. You know, we can tell you, we can tell you yeah. what, what we think will happen. And uh, obviously people are free to disagree or, or agree with that. But even if you accept them on their case, ultimately the final decision is a moral, political, ethical one. And for all the politicians to essentially hide behind scientists is a form of cowardice. It's also a power grab because like so many things, you know, economics or whatever it is, oh, this is just a question of ex expertise. And I said, it's not yeah. just... 
liberal arts graduates that they might give a good kicking to. Remember, it's, if you don't have a degree, remember what they did with Brexit? And they say this like this is, is a closed Duncan case. Well, all the non-graduates voted to, to leave. And your reply to that should be, and. But they're thinking, yeah. mm-hmm, because not only, do they, not only are graduates you know, superior in terms of qualification, and this is the big change in the last 30, 40 years, they're morally better. You're, you're actually morally a better person if you have a degree than if you don't. Yeah, and I say Laura, this to someone who's got I, a lot of degrees. And it's, it's poison. And I, it's completely poisonous. You and I have both got degrees. Yeah. And I don't look down even no, a fraction of an inch on mm. people who haven't got a degree. Often I find, and, I, and without sounding patronising, because I yeah. don't mean it at all, I found this very much during Brexit. You have you have a chat with somebody who hasn't got a degree, probably got a sort of proper job, like yeah. I don't know, being a roofer or a plumber or something mm. like that. I'm not. I, I I never come away thinking, well, this person hasn't got a degree, and he really he really yes. can't converse with me on it on the subjects <laughs> that matter. I think finally, yeah. finally, I'm talking to somebody who gets it. It's, yeah, I know. I I, I and, and also. You, I mean, you're younger than me, so you must have seen the beginning of this. But there's no question that the kids, the the, new, the newer generations, are far more poorly educated um, sure. than yes. my generation was. I mean, I actually did, you know, when I did my English degree, I did actually read Mallory and and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Beowulf and stuff, and we talked about the actual text and its and its relevance to it, 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 literature and history and so on. Now I'm sure they're all doing kind of um, gendered yeah you know gendered nonsense in unreadable crap um yeah, yeah. so uh, isn't it interesting um somebody pointed this out to me um actually it was steve hilton um oh, yeah. are you familiar with steve hilton he's one of the good guys mm. he's got a show on fox news he used to be he used to he be david cameron yeah he used oh, to be I, david I cameron's the... advice yeah yeah but it, it he's a very interesting case study of somebody mm. who was right in the system i mean right yes. up the system um and 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 somehow has emerged with his integrity his intellectual integrity intact anyway he said something something very true the other day he said that the only interesting thing that anyone said during the entire brexit campaign yeah was when gove came out with his line about oh, yeah. we've all had enough of experts yes and isn't it weird that mm. one of the main guys p- pushing this this cult mm. of of experts now is yeah. is gove i mean we yeah. are enthralled to people like the awful neil ferguson and the awful witty and the awful yeah. valance yeah, but they, as d- I said, deeply compromised individuals. At the moment, scientists happen to be the experts, but I wouldn't really have a dig at them because the next time, you know, as I said, during Brexit, it was the economists, right, that were the experts and the trade lawyers were the experts. And in, in a few years' time, someone else with the next big thing, someone else will be an expert. When they say that, though, really, it's a way of saying, um, of hiding the fact that ultimately there are moral decisions to make, there are ethical decisions to make, and they're not, you, me or Joe, are not allowed, you, you're not allowed even have an opinion on it because you're not an expert. Well, you're not an here's expert. the thing. Here's the thing, Laura. Have you noticed how um, certain experts are acceptable, but other experts yes. aren't the right kind of experts? No, so look at how Mike, Mike Yeadon is, yeah. the, is the classic example. This mm-hmm. guy spent 30 years working at Pfizer, ending up heading their respiratory diseases research department. So like if you had to pick a a more experty expert with with fields, with expertise relevant to what's going on now, you would instantly pick Mike Yeadon. But look what's happening. You've got um, Mail on Sunday expert uh, Dan Hodges. You've got You've got IEA think tanker expert on smoking and the nanny state, Chris Snowden. Yeah. And they're writing these really vituperative pieces, just absolutely trashing Mike Eden as a complete kook. And again, uh, Ivor Cummins, who's, who's a, an engineer um, by training, but engineers... I think yeah, we've established yeah. before, we, they're the kind of the, the, the most rigorous scientists because they have to be because yeah, you don't yeah, want yeah. to go over a theoretical bridge. No, no, no. <laughs> you want to no. go over one that yeah. actually 
yeah, that's actually works. Off. Yeah. So, but 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 look at the concerted attempt by the by the sort of the government's propaganda machines, which is what it is really. I don't I, mean, I don't know how they got to got to these to Snowden and Co. But 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 they're they're actually trashing the reputation mm. of Eden so that we can't people like us are unable to say, well, hang on a second. Neil Ferguson is saying one thing, but yeah. here's Mike Eden. He, you know, he actually has has um, scientific expertise relative to this field, which, which mm. by the way, um, Neil Ferguson doesn't even. I mean, he's a no, physicist and a modeler. He's not a. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, it's it's a it's a hall of mirrors. You know, we are being yeah. we are being played. I absolutely agree with you. By the way, you, you're here as the normie. You're, you're you're playing the Toby Young, the the oh, uncuck. Right. Toby, because you're not a cuck, at least like Tobes, but but you are the normie. I'm 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 further down the rabbit hole. But in a way, uh, I need you to, to 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 spell it out very simply that that lockdowns are are, are wrong, regardless of yeah. what these these that, experts no, that, that are kind of. Been my position. That's always been my position, and in a way, you could almost say that it's an even tougher position because. Even on their case, like even if they say, even if their worst case scenario is true, I still think it's wrong. I still think it's, or at least it's wrong because it's definitely disproportionate. As I said, I would have been open yes. to some restrictions, but it completely fails to test the proportionality. So, um, you know, look, what, you know, what can you say? No, I mean, we can't. I mean, the way they have rounded on the lo lockdown skeptics, which I think is a silly term. But anyway, I mean, I would just call me myself a normal person. But the way they've sort of rounded yes. on is, is very, um, look, people are free to criticize, I guess you could say. But it's, it's also just, it's like, first of all, you're, there are a tiny percentage of the population, unfortunately, I accept that. And our influence is sadly probably quite small. But it's like, you know, it is that totalitarian mindset, isn't it? That there can be no dissent, absolutely no dissent. And unless you're yeah. completely signed up to this narrative, you know, you're like, uh, you're a danger to society. And it's, it, to me, I'm just looking at them going, do you have nothing better to do with your time? Because even, you know, for all the people you've mentioned, even if they're, they're all lockdown hawks now, even on their terms, they're a bit like, you know, look, it's the least of worst evils. You know, I mean, we're all nominal conservatives or whatever. And look, and, and their line seems to be, I mean, I, I haven't followed that, co that closely. Their line seems to be, look, we have the vaccine here, right? We have it right here and we just need to bide some time. Maybe it's three weeks, maybe it's four weeks, right? Let's just bide some time until we roll out Maybe the it's three months. Yeah, that's their line. In which case, then, why aren't you on top of the government, A, to make sure the vaccine is rolled out, and B, to, to stop any goalposts moving? But if, they, if the government moves those goalposts, they will be, they will be defending them. They will be there going, but oh, well, already... you did a new variant. You know, what could you do? And I'm like, you're not interested in holding this government to account at all. And at the end of the day, I'm only interested normally in holding people who have power to account. Yeden doesn't have any power. The rest of them doesn't, yeah. you know, Ivor Cummings doesn't have any power. So why are you going after them? Why don't you, why don't you do what a libertarian is supposed to do? Namely, examine the power that the government is trying to impose on you. Why don't you do that? But no, no, it's all like, oh, well, Ivor Cummings, he's an engineer. He's, oh, shut up. Just do your job. Oh, I do hope. Chris Snowden watches that bit, Laura. I, li I like it when you, when you tell yeah, him off. Yeah, just do your job. That's, that's like, really good. Yeah, lolbatarian. What what a fail. What what what? How yeah. how many goalposts are the government going to move before they say actually uh, enough is enough? You know, actually Don't no, you, feel, you can't keep it going till June. No, you can't keep it going till the last body on Great Britain has a vaccine. But I don't think because they're so think? invested right in their position, I don't think that's ever going to come. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I I, I think that the the government's response to coronavirus in the last, well, you know, give or take 12 months is, is now much easier to understand. And it can only be understood in the following terms. Oh, go on. The government's priority was not to stop people dying. It was not to um, not to get the economy, obviously not to get the economy back, back working. Yeah, it that. was not to 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 minimize the disruption caused by uh, by coronavirus. Their main objective 
was to get people to take the vaccine, regardless, you know, to, to rush out the vaccine, and, to, and, and we're now in the stage where they, they've got to get everyone to, to, to take it. And mm. you, the, the reason that you can see that this is the case, even though it sort of defies all logic, what, you know, why would government's policy be you know, an end in itself to get everyone to take the vaccine? Well, I mean, I suppose the I suppose the the kind of the generous line would be the sunk cost fallacy that they decided quite early on, what, maybe about April last year, that they were going to roll out the vaccines and that this was going to be their route out. So the sunk cost fallacy, they've spent all this money, yeah. uh, exhausted all this kind of political capital prepping us for the, for the vaccine. So now they've got to carry through. That's the that's the generous um, uh, uh, explanation. I would I think the real explanation is much, much darker than that, because look, um, look at what they're saying now about the, 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 how they've changed the rules on the vaccine. It used to be once you've all had the vaccine, you can all get back to normal life and you don't have to wear masks and stuff and, and everything will be normal. Yeah, again. Yeah. Now it's even when you've had the vaccine, mm. you still need to wear the mask. You still need to, to keep social distancing. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't stop you necessarily stop you transmitting coronavirus. Yeah. And it only buys you what it does is it, it buys you some reduced symptoms, maybe. And you've got to have another injection in a few months. Like, yeah, no, I know. It's, yeah, and people it's are just like, going, oh, yeah, must take the vaccine. Well, they've gone from terrifying the public in general, as we said on the last podcast, you know, just that you, you just their complete sort of terrorism campaign that went on for a week or so. And now it's switched, as you say, subtly to saying now they seem to be terrified that anybody who's gotten the virus is now going to go out and, I don't know, meet somebody else or something. It's not like they can go to a restaurant or a pub anyway. So um, anybody who's hoping they're for their vaccine passports, I can tell you that's one thing that will not be coming down the line because it, it seems they're terrified of that people, you know, will get the vaccine and then sort of go, go and party hard. I mean, I don't know why your average 85 year old is going to be doing that. But yeah, I mean, it just, you know, they every every week there's a new sort of terror campaign. Um, it, it's, it's moved, as I said, from the general, you mustn't, you, you know, you just mustn't even breathe uh, general population to now um, vaccine. If you get vaccine, please, please keep, keep, keep to the rules. Well, how many people, how long are you going to be saying that? Are you going to be saying that for when the entire population is vaccinated? You know, I mean, it, it, the goalpost moving well, is the is entire so population blatant. apart from me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just so blatant, and they're never called out on us ever. You know, it goes from like mid February to uh, maybe the beginning of March, and now it's like now it's like oh well, you mightn't even have Easter. We well, may get to meet. So, 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 so the Sun guy, Tom Newton, whatever his name is, was tweeting He's awful. yesterday. Oh, awful. Yeah, I know. Was tweeting yesterday. Really uh, bad. Uh, you know, oh, the leak is now. W will families be able to meet up at Easter? You're like, hang on. You told me at Christmas that Easter was going to be my new Christmas. Not to have Christmas, but to have a big Easter. That's what you told me at Christmas. Now you're saying so, we're going to cancel Easter? Like, did, why does nobody call them on the goalpost moving? It is the most infuriating thing. It really is. Can I just say... Uh, very briefly, Tom Newton Dunn oh, yeah. is he, he he's one of his, he tests my faith in the private education system. <laughs> Tom Newton Dunn went 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 to Marlborough. You know, his parents, how much would that have cost? They'd have cost the equivalent now of about thirty five thousand a year to educate yeah. young Tom Newton Dunn posh boy. I, I, I'm, I'm, he's just become this horrible sort of establishment creepy stooge. But, I, I don't understand how you can become a journalist and not be interested in yeah. in kind of fighting fighting corruption and and yeah. and getting to the truth and instead he's just become a propagandist for the for the liberal elite no look yeah but i think i'm sorry james but my view of the private schools especially the more elite especially the elite yeah. ones i mean i Tell think me. people are only interested in in climbing the 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 greasy pole right and and professional success they're not interested in sort of propagating a particular viewpoint or stance you know that that would be my I think, uh, you could be you could be right laura i mean we're sounding like a couple of bloody lefties aren't we i why is it that because you what, did you have a private education uh no no well the last two years but not really no well, you, had, you had a sort of elite my education kids, my ish. kids have a private education but uh, yeah. as they always say the small ones the small schools it's a yeah. Catholic school. right yeah. I just think it's I, I just think it's curious. Why is it that we uh, is it because we, maybe we're common? 
Is that we're not posh enough? Is that why we're, we're, we, we have this scepticism? Um, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, you know, I wouldn't say no to someone coming along and saying, <laughs> I don't know, how much am I, how much would I sell out for? Um, uh, I, I don't know. It's hard to say, isn't it? It's hard to say. You can, you can, I, I think I would find it hard to, uh, to be in a job I really didn't like or to, to, you know, push for somebody or something that I didn't believe in. That would, I would find that very difficult. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I, no. I genuinely couldn't do it. Yeah. I, I, I would be, um, you know, you know, I mean, if somebody w wanted to s give me five million to say something I was going to say anyway, I'd have no moral problem with that at all. You know, no, somebody no, no. wanted to support me. Yeah. As, as long as the deal was, you can say what the hell you like. Yes. Uh, I'm going to back you because I love you. Yeah. That's that seems to me entirely legit. But if somebody said to me, I'm going to pay you to say something you don't believe in. No. Yeah. No, no, I know. I agree. That's like I agree. worse than prostitution. No, um, yeah, no, anyway, you're, you're probably right that you're selling your soul as opposed to just selling your body. No, I think that's true. I mean, I, I mean, of course, the question is, is where, where, where are, I mean, all the, all the conservative funding, all the funding for conservative causes goes into very, very mainstream, you know, institutions. Uh, you know, we will be considered yeah. too far of an outlier, I think. So pe people aren't willing. We're to outside think. the Everton window. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, the, the people wouldn't be willing to take take a risk because then, well, who knows what happened? And it, it's all because the lefty, the lefty liberal, well, not even liberal, the leftist stance rules in the media. So, yes. you know, somebody be, will be, if you made a donation, I mean, I'm not even saying to us, to, but to anybody or, or, or to say our website, a big donation, they would be, they will have to accept the fact that they will be monstered by the left wing press, maybe some of the right wing press. And then what they'll do is, you know, they will dig up some blog out of the 20,000 blogs, right, that we've run on Conservative Woman. That was a little bit out there. And they will say, you, sir, whatnot, you have donated to this website that once ran a blog in 2012 that said this about, you know, homeless people. You're a monster. And then he unless he's willing to say, fuck you, um, he'll 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 just be a coward and go running. That's why. That's the problem. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, I, I think that's absolutely right. Laura, I wanted to talk to you. I wanted because I know that this is the kind of thing will interest our listeners a lot. Oh, yeah. Just the 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 small sad stories that you hear about this this encroaching tyranny, um, yes. the the vaccine tyranny, for example. So let me t tell you two stories. Very sad. One of which is is uh, I know this um, osteopath. Yeah. who is very much of our party on vaccines. Um, she had she had coronavirus last year, you know, diagnosed and and she got had a proper test for it and got a certificate and everything. So she's she's effectively got certainly T cell immunity. She's not going to get it again. Um, but she's now had a letter from her association, her oh. trade association saying you must have the vaccine. And she's really against the vaccine. She's really worried about it. She's just, and she's, she's in despair. She doesn't know what to do because That's terrible. Um, no, that is bad. Yeah, but this again, is, you see, it, this is people who are even this, pro vaccine should be against that stance. It is, it is completely incorrect. They're basically threatening her livelihood unless she gets yes. the vaccine. You know, that's not yes. acceptable in a, in a, in a, in a democratic country. Irrelevant of your stance. On vaccines, as you said, she's immune anywhere. She's T cell immunity anyway. No, I mean, I think it's that is bad. I think there's going to be a lot of that. Um, again, it's easier for me and you because we don't have an employer to fire us. But you know, if your employer comes along and says you have to get a vaccine or else, um, it puts you in a very, very difficult position. Um, as you, you say, are you familiar? Authoritarian. Are you familiar with the concept of the cathedral? Oh, go on. Vaguely. The, the cathedral, in, in, in the sense of burn the cathedral, that 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 our society, um, Western civilization, pretty much as it is at the moment, uh, is this is this cathedral constructed by the the liberal left, where you know, people people say, well, well, it's not like the government is necessarily telling you, you know, dictating these these terms. You, you know, we we're all sort of free individuals. But actually, yeah. we're not because mm. every constituent part of this edifice is working towards the same goal. I mean, OK, so common purpose, for example, helped by infiltrating every sort of public public body and stuff and training selected people to think in the correct liberal left way. Yeah. But this is an example of 
you know, the government, the government has not yet told us that we must have these vaccines. But what trade professional bodies like yes. the, the, the whatever represents osteopaths are doing are acting in concert with the government yeah. and they're kind of they're gold plating government directives to make yeah. them inescapable. And that's the really scary part. That's what we're heading towards now. Did you know, for example, that Chelsea Flower Show this year is insisting that everyone who comes to Chelsea Flower Show has to have a negative coronavirus te virus test? Really? I mean, how yeah. much are those tests? I, I had one done with done by my friend Aidan Hartley, but he's gone back to he's gone back to Kenya now. But his was, is, was is, just about so affordable. How, how can they get away with that, though? I mean, I yeah, just well, exactly. You know, but the, yeah, no, because exactly. They the can, like a dog licking yeah. its balls. They can. Yeah, but because the government, as you say, they won't necessarily have to issue sort of a mandate in the old fashioned sort of fascist way. You all must have a vaccine. But ex exactly all the corporations that we've we, we've are complete enemies. So I don't know why conservatives, you know, I, I'm not defending them from a massive tax burden if that's what people want to do. The corporations, all of the a lot of the charities. Yeah, there'll be enough people or, or groups to voluntarily say you must get a vaccine or you can't come in without a vaccine for it to make it de facto uh, mandatory. No, I, I mean, I know it's um, and then but again, because everybody's just willing to go along with it, you know, and, and well, it doesn't disturb my life. Um, uh, pe people like your friend yes. are essentially crushed underneath the the power. That's why it's so important for even if you have a vaccine, say, I have a vaccine, I have no problem. But no, my, she, my colleague, should not be made to get a vaccine for the sake of oh, her life. Another one. She doesn't to guess. Another, you know. Another example. Um, a friend of mine in his 80s feels as we do about the vaccine. Right. Uh, didn't want to get it. Has now had, I think, his fifth call from his GP demanding yeah. or, or heavy hinting that he really needs to come in and get his vaccine. And all his all his circle of, of friends, and you can imagine when you're in your 80s, you don't get, you haven't got that many people around to, to hang, out, hang out with. Yeah. They're all sort of bullying him. They won't, they won't associate with him unless he gets the vaccine. It's, it's Ooh, that's not nice. an, a, another story, another, an, another story. Um, a seven year old um, girl, daughter of a GP, comes to school, comes to her class with a nasty cough, such as children through the ages yes. have had, yeah? Instantly, all the other, it's a, it's, a, it's a girl's school, all the other girls in the class go to the other side of the classroom, go, ooh, like she's got cooties or something, as Americans yeah. say. And, 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 and you know what, how cruel little girls are. And, and they say, well, the, the, the teacher sort of says, says stop that. They say, no, she's got, she's got coronavirus. She's got coronavirus. She's got coronavirus. No, no. The girl hasn't got coronavirus. But anyway, the nurse comes, the, the matron comes along and takes her away. And the girl's oh, in tears. God. She's been humiliated because she's got this cough. And the, the, mother, the mother says, look, I know she hasn't got coronavirus. I know what the symptoms are. I've, we, yes. we've, we've, you know, blah, blah, blah. The mother knows. Yeah. So anyway, the girl's forced to get a coronavirus test. And guess what? She hasn't got coronavirus. And now th this girl is going to be a pariah in her school. And all these girls are going to have it fixed in their brains, from, you know, their seven-year-old mm. brains, which have lost the rest of their life, that the correct policy when any disease comes along is, is to, yeah. to reject the person with disease to, yeah. to treat them as a pariah um that that n no precautions are too strong that mm. masks are important that it's we are creating a a, a a horribly dystopian future yeah no it's, it's very cruel and as i said before the most annoying thing is how people who are going along with this view themselves as sort of the selfless ones and you know they have the high moral ground it's not you're That's being Christian. utterly selfish you're asking everybody else to make a massive sacrifice because your health is so is so precious. It's all it's all for me. And um, you know how how just how dare you even come close to me? I'm I'm so precious, and you're just like you you just you're just so self obsessed. You know, and, and I mean this is this is true. You can and if you really push them with it and and ask them a number of questions, you know, like do you do you, are you happy with the fact that children won't be able to like read and write now because they've closed the schools? They just go. Yeah, it's a price worth paying, which which brings me, as I said, to the schools before. And I'll just say because it, it kind of links in. I mean, talk about experts. The problem with this, and I mean, I totally disagree with the schools being closed day to day and the secondary schools and the universities. But this, again, is going to feed into the whole leftist 
aim, of course, of collapsing standards and having a complete race to the bottom. Because what are the government going to do? They're just going to do, as you said the last time, it's going to be prizes for all. The universities are going to be bullied into basically giving first. God knows what's going to have to ha- happen with all the A-levels and Gs. They'll just be given, you know, whatever, fake grades. Nobody's actually going to know anything because they simply will not have learned it. You know, and it's, it's, it's actually frightening. And I mean, because even with last year's cohort, you've got, I mean, so many A's were given out, I think, last year, weren't they? So they're given A's for yeah, exams. Yeah, 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 yeah. For exams, you never even sat. Now, I have sympathy, I have huge sympathy for them. I, I get that it's not their fault. But you've been given something for essentially that you do not deserve. You didn't sit that exam. You know, I, may, I, I agree you may have worked over the year, but I, I think a lot of them stopped in April. And you've been given an exam for, for are you given a grade for an exam you never sat? And then you're going to be given a degree for a degree you'll probably have barely read anything for, depending on how long this goes on for. You know, and it's just, as you say, it's just this mirage. It's just this sort of, um, you know, what call it like the matrix. Just that you're just being lied to all the time. Of course, it in deep in- the ma- Yeah. But deep inside, yes, they is. know they're being lied to. And that's a form of shame and humiliation. You know, I got an A, even though I know deep down I didn't do any work for it. Or I got an um, I first, even though I know I didn't do any work for it. I'm very glad you invoked the Matrix, because I'm obviously Neo. What, <laughs> do, are, there any, are there any female characters in Neo's gang? I can't There's remember. The, the girl, the, the girl. I forget her name, though. The girl. The yeah. hair, dark hair. Come on. Well, you can be the girl with the short, dark hair then, whatever her name is. I don't, yes, I, I'm going to have to see that film again. But you, know, you are not, you're, you're not wrong there, Laura. We are, we are in the Matrix world. This, we are being played massively. What's going on is not normal and we shouldn't accept it. I mean, the, the other analogy I was going to use, I feel at the moment like a kind of, if this is our World War II that we're living through, and it is, I do very much feel like the the Nazis are hunting down the French resistance in, in, you know, up, we've, we've got our redoubt up in the mountains, maybe in, yeah. in, in, in the woods, in the mountains. And, and, and they're coming for us they're, and, they're, and they're picking us off one by one. It, it's, well, it's extraordinary. The, and I, I'm not going to surrender. No. I, I just think we've got no. the truth on our side. We've got morality on our side. What, yeah, what yeah. is being done is wrong. And everyone listening to the, watching this show knows it's wrong. And yeah. that, in a way, is that's why we need each other. We our audience need us, and we need them because we need yeah. to sort of share. Yeah, no, I know. I, I mean, they'll also they'll they'll rewrite history as well. They'll forget about all the goalposts moving, and they'll forget about how how they said, you know. I mean, if again, if we go, it was three weeks to flatten the curve. Do you remember that? Then there was the not yeah. lockdown in November. Or squash the sombrero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then there was, oh, you, just, you just have to remind yourself the lies. Then it was let's lock down in November to save Christmas. Then uh, it was cancel Christmas. Then they cancel Christmas anyway. Then, they, then it was yeah. cancel Christmas to avoid a lockdown in January. They locked down in January anyway. And um, <laughs> yes. then, it'll, then it'll, no, it's it, literally all the time. <laughs> it's true. Uh, it's yeah. true you're not making it up. No, no. And then, and then there's a lockdown in January until the vaccine is rolled out. And then you can bet your bottom dollar. And then they've added on unless there's a new variant. But, I mean, of course there'll be a new variant. Of course there'll I mean, be. A... Of course there will be. So they've be. already prepared the next excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it'll be, it won't be killing anybody. I mean, how could it possibly? First of all, people will already be vaccinated against it on their terms. And, and secondly, lots of people have already had it. So, I mean, eventually, yeah. look. I mean, they will lift it in spring and summer, mainly because people will just go out and you'll have the same thing that you had last year. That's the rioting season. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, people people aren't going to stay. People aren't going to stay in their heads. Okay, they can't go to... So eventually there will... Pressure will build. Once the numbers come down, and you have to believe the numbers will eventually come down, you know, pressure will start to build to open up here and there. But they they will stretch this out for as long as possible. And supposedly, oh yeah, this is what, do you believe the polls or do you think they're lying? 85% support think, the lockdown. Laura, mm. I think everything that you hear from an official source is, yeah. is a lie. I, I, I do not trust any of it. No, I agree. Because they, they have yes. an agenda. No, I agree. And I think you go over completely compromised. But to be honest, I wouldn't, it doesn't surprise me if a cert, like all the over 50 supported it, but there's nobody I know who supports it. You know, so I'm just wondering no. how, how long, I mean, why isn't, I guess there's just no organized opposition. This is the problem. And, and they were very splintered at the moment. Well, it's um, interesting, isn't it? That, that I, th- I think we may have mentioned this before, that 
the the most together people on this issue have been the the anti-vaxxers, the the five G people, the the Piers Corbyn crowd, and I think it's very interesting that Piers Corbyn um, is was subject of a hit job in the mail on Sunday. You know, they did some undercover sting. Like, how difficult is it to do an undercover sting on on Piers yeah, Corbyn? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's perfectly upfront about what he believes. It's no it, it it's no no secret. And what they do is they say. Here is this man with these ridiculous views. He thinks yes. that COVID is a hoax. Well, to all intents and purposes, it is a hoax. I mean, it, there's no question that, that people are dying of it and that it's, you know, it's, like, it's like a bad flu year. But the idea that this is a unique and unique bug that, that deserves to be treated even more seriously than the Spanish flu just, just makes no sense. Yeah. It makes no sense at all. Well, I mean, they, they're, they're, there is always a long running smear campaign. Oh, yeah. So and then did you see the Lord Sumption thing? And did you see that he, uh, he, did. he did? He did not take your advice and he went on BBC. Big questions. Big, pro- big, big mistake. Brave and, brave and foolish. Wait, wait, is that the one that Nicky Campbell presents? Yeah, I think so. it's, it's off. It's just awful. But, Unless you know how to handle them, which he didn't. And I can tell you what his error was. I did have a lot of sympathy for him. You know, oh, because tell, me, like, tell me, because I, I didn't watch it. Tell me what right, he did. So, before, well, what before, happened before was, of course, it was just a dumpster fire in a way. Um, so he's talking overall about, you know, the costs and benefits of lockdown. And I think he was talking about, I didn't watch it, but this is what I've read. You know how nice is it, how, they, they, when they're determining whether to give someone a treatment, they... The call is, yeah. That they they ask how many quality life years are left. Okay. Yes. So Lord Simpson ended up saying to somebody who had cancer, she was saying in her forties that her 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 life was of less value than yeah. than someone who I presume didn't have cancer, and and he his defense was you know um, when you know in 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 when determining government policy when determining when nice for instance they're considering treatment these these things are weighed up. How many quality life years will you have left? But of course, everybody else, including that horrific person, Nell O'Brien, is like, ah, oh, there you, you see, you think people are have no value. You, 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 your life is, yeah. how dare you say someone is, is has less value? And, you know, it, I've obviously defended, I'm saying, look, first of all, Lord Sumption doesn't need to be in this fight, right? I'm sure he's got a lovely house somewhere in the country. He's ex-Supreme Court judge, and he could read his way through this lockdown. No problems at all. He's an intellectual guy. This will have very little impact on him. So I think there's an element of courage for him to put himself in this, number one. And number two is he, again, is debating government policy. He's debating the huge amount of power that the government now has over you and what are the limits and what should you consider when that power is being exercised? He's not making a moral and ethical judgment between person A and person B, you know, just randomly in a coffee shop. So, but, so uh, out of interest, yeah. What, what, I mean, apart from saying no to the invitation, which is a, which is a given. Yeah. What what should he? Have, how could he have avoided that trap? Yeah. Because they I, do set traps for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just think if it was me, and if I was look. I, I'm afraid Lord Sumption, who supposedly has the brain the size of a something or other, uh, uh, you know, the moon, is is a some blue whale. Yeah, you can be just a bit too smart for your own good. And essentially, when it, I'm afraid most of these debates, especially those audience debates, come down to emotion. And the only thing you shouldn't be getting into the technicality of this policy and that policy, which you will have done in, as a judge, right? Because you're going to be so meticulous reading every judgment, reading every submission, going back on previous judgments. What what is precedent? What isn't precedent? Like it can turn on a tiny point of law, right? A particular decision. So you have to be meticulous. But when you're with Nikki Campbell, you want to put all that in the bin. And all you need to be talking about is the, the, the complete hardship lockdowns are creating, how it's going to ruin, ruin education for kids, how it's causing teenagers to be suicidal, how people are, are dying of cancer because they can't get treatment, how people are going to be bankrupt, what the unemployment will raise, the unbelievable misery that lockdowns are creating. And you, whatever, pro-lockdown hawk, don't care. You have to make them the good, the bad guys. Instead, he spends the next 48 hours defending himself. You know, you're just like, they, they, you just, I, I, my view now is most things should be argued on emotion because you don't have time to get into the intricacies of, of you know, uh, this policy and that policy. And, and some people just don't get us.
That's also that's a problem. really like, don't get. I, I I like that argue from emotion. I I that's. I wish we could carry on this conversation, yeah, but unfortunately, you, um, I've now got to hand over the office to yes. to my 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 wife because uh, she's got a Zoom call. Uh, this is the kind of age we live in. Laura, yeah. um, before I go, uh, is there anything you can do about your microphone or your camera or your lighting or anything? People complaining. Well, but it's some some Sorry. people some people Sorry. they get upset about it. Sorry, I, just I know. I like the fog over my face. I don't. Yeah. Well, people. People, you know, you're being unfair on yourself now. Look, look, people want to see what people actually love you and want to see more of you. Um, probably in the comments, they will, they, they may, they may give tips on. Uh, you know, uh, listen, send people. Me uh, we, send me a link. We viewers, don't need to to, to a, to a yes. nice microphone, send, or indeed send, send Laura some links. <laughs> and, um, yeah. yeah, help and Laura I, out. Don't, don't don't say, oh, you need to get some new equipment. That's not helpful. No. What's helpful is saying. You need to get this. You can do that, and and yes. this will make things better. That's what we need to know. Nora and I, we're we're liberal arts graduates. Next time, I can sit in the light, but I like I like it dark. Um, Laura, that was great. Um, yeah. Till till next week. Um, yes, that's been next really week fun. Yeah. Um, all right. Be Bye. Take it easy, James. Bye.